Yes. Okay. Good money. Yeah, Go I'm here. Okay. okay, okay. So we'll begin again. Sati, please say, say Sati as yeah. host. Sure, sure, sure. And me as co-host. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Hare Krishna. We're we're reading recording Krishna. in progress. We're reading Krishna book chapter number fifty six, the story of the Shaman Takajo. So in the kingdom of Dwarka, Dwarka Dam, there was a, another king named Satrajit. And he was a great devotee of the sun god. The sun god gave him a special jewel which was called the Shimantaka jewel. But because of this jewel, it caused a misunderstanding, a misunderstanding between King Satrajit and the Yadu dynasty. Later, then it was all, the problem was solved when Satrajit gave his daughter, who was called Satyabhama, he gave his daughter to Lord Krishna. At that time, he also offered the Shaimantaka jewel to Lord Krishna. So, Satyabha, and also Krishna got another wife called Jambavati, who was the daughter of a person called Jambavan. So because of this shy Krishna got two new wives. And these two marriages, they took place before the birth of Prajumna. We heard about Prajumna in the last chapter. So before his birth, the two marriages took place. So we're going to hear what, what King Satrajit did which offended the Yadu dynasty. And what and what happened that caused him to give back his give give the offer the jewel and also offer his daughter to Krishna. So the Satrajit was a great devotee of the sun god. And he, he had become a very good friend with the sun god. And the sun god was so pleased with this Satrajit that he gave him this very incredible jewel called the Shamantaka jewel. So when Satrajit would wear this jewel, he had the jewel made into a locket and he would wear it around his neck and it made him appear like he was like a, another sun god. 
当晒着痣的王获得了这颗宝石之后呢，他把宝石放在了一个小盒子里，然后挂在自己的脖颈上，他就像一位仿制的太阳神。And when he would wear the jewel around his neck, and he if he went into the city of Dwarka, then the people all thought that it was the sun god who had come into the city, that he must have come to see Lord Krishna. 当扫着痣的王把宝石系在颈上的小盒里，来进入到多尔卡城来一呃见 Krishna 的时候，城中的人还错以为是太阳神前来觐见 Krishna。The people in Dwarka knew that Krishna was the supreme personality of Godhead, so sometimes the demigods would come to visit him. 多尔卡城中的人们知道 Krishna 是至尊人格守神，所以会经常有半神人到来觐见他。So while Satrajit was in the city of Dwarka, all the all the people in Dwarka, except for Lord Krishna, they thought that he must be the sun god. 所以当 Satrajit 王造访多尔卡城的时候，除了主 Krishna 之外，所有的居民都误以为他是太阳神了。Actually, everybody knew who Satrajit was, but they couldn't recognize him because he was wearing the Shamantaka jewel and he looked so effulgent. So sometime it happened that some of the important people in Dwarka. Would come to Lord Krishna and tell him the sun god has come to see Krishna. They the, the tell Krishna the sun god has come to see you. 那么有一些社会上的重要人士，就这个时候就连忙跑来禀告 Krishna， 太阳神前来觐见您了。When they came to see Krishna, Krishna was actually playing a game of chess. 当他们来看见 Krishna 的时候 ，Krishna 正在下棋。But this this one man is an i m p o r t a 其中的一位社会贤达就开口说道：“呃，我知道。” And I know that in your form as Lord Narayan, you have four hands, and you carry the conch shell, the disc, the club, and the lotus flower. 嗯，在您的嗯 Narayan 的这个形象当中，您的四臂分别拿着不同的象征：海螺、神蝶、神锤和莲花。You are actually the owner of everything. 您实际上是万事万物的拥有者。And and and、uh, although you are Lord Narayan, you descended in Vrindavan just to become the child of Yashoda Mata. 虽然您是主纳尔安本人，但是您仍然降临到文达文，成为了亚舍达的儿子。And Yashoda would sometimes tie you up with the ropes. <laughs> Therefore, you got the name Damodar. Yashoda 有的时候会用绳索捆绑您，您因而得到了 Damodar 之赞誉。So Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, Narayan, and this was except this was known by the citizens in Dwarka. Krishna 就是至尊性格守神 Narayana。Um, And Shankaracharya, who preached about the Mayavadi philosophy, he also accepted Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead. Uh, Sankaracharya accepted the Lord as impersonal, but he did not 
They did not deny that the, the Lord has a personal form. Everything which has a form in the material world is subject, is going to, there must be creation, there must be maintenance, and there will be also destruction. But when Lord Personality of Godhead, Lord Narayan comes, he does not have a material form. So it's not subject to these things. So Shankaracharya, he wanted to convince foolish, less intelligent people that Krishna is not an ordinary human being. So he taught that God is also impersonal. This means he is not a person of the material world. He is a transcendental person without a material body. So the people, the citizens in Dwarka, they used they would address Krishna sometimes as Damodar and sometimes as Govinda. The name Govinda means that Krishna is very, very dear to the cows and the calves. And sometimes they would also address Krishna as Yadu Nandana because he was born of the son of Vasudev in the Yadu dynasty. And the people, yeah, the people in Dwarka, they're also in the Yadu dynasty, so they like to have that intimate connection with Krishna. And the people of Dwarka, they would, when they address Krishna, they would address him as the supreme master of the whole universe. So they would address Krishna in many wonderful ways. And they were very proud to be citizens in Dwarka and be able to see Krishna every day. So when Satrajit was visiting Dwarka, the people were the people of Dwarka were feeling proud to think that uh, the demigods were coming to see Lord Krishna. And Krishna was living in Dwarka just like an ordinary human being. Krishna so they told Krishna that the sun god with his effulgence was coming to see him. At the same time, the people in Dwarka, 
，哎呦，我刚才我忘了听课了，光看那些没用的。三弟，你需要 mute， 把他们 mute。The city, so the people in Dwarka, they didn't think it was very wonderful that the sun god was coming to Dwarka. Uh, Dwarka's the people, they thought the sun god was coming to Dwarka. Because the people in Dwarka knew that there's people all over the universe looking to find. Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Some of the, some people knew that Krishna had appeared in the Yadu dynasty and was living in Dwarka as one of the family members. So they would often di different people from all over the creation would come to want to see Krishna. So, 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 So when Krishna heard them say, when he heard the people say that the sun god had come to see him, Krishna just smiled. When Krishna heard them say that the sun god had come to see him, Krishna just smiled. When Krishna heard them say that the sun god had come to see him, Krishna was happy with the people of Dwarka, but he told them. That that person who they thought was the sun god was not. It wasn't the sun god. It was actually King Satrajit. Krishna 为多尔卡的居民感到高兴，但是他告诉他们，那那一个人实际上并不是太阳神，他实际上是 Satrajit 王。Satrajit has just come to visit the city in Dwarka to show off his opulence and by wearing the valuable jewel. Which he got from the sun god. And even though Satrajit came to Dwarka, he didn't come to see Krishna. He was so proud of his Shaimantaka jewel. So Satrajit put the jewel in a temple, and he arranged for Brahmanas to do the worship of the jewel. Satrajit 王便把宝石放在由婆罗门崇拜的庙中来供奉。We see sometimes like this: less intelligent people, stupid people, they will worship something material. In the Bhagavad Gita, it describes people who don't have a good brain that they will worship things to get material results. Just like sometimes they will worship the demigods to get material results. 正如他他们有的时候会呃为了物质的好处来崇拜半神人。So materialist to be materialist means that people are concerned with sense gratification. 物质主义者是指那些只关心感官享乐的人们。Later, Krishna will ask for the king to give the the Shaimantaka jewel, but the king didn't want to give it. 后来
Krishna 向 Satchit 的国王索要这颗宝石，但是，嗯 ，Satchit 的王拒不，嗯，拒绝了，没有把他的宝石献出来。Instead, Satrajit put the jewel on the throne, and he made his temple for the jewel, and he had the Brahmins worship it every day. Satrajit 王反而把宝石呢放在一个宝座上，并且置于庙中，让婆罗门来崇拜。It was a very special jewel. Every day, it was producing gold. 这是一颗非常特殊的宝石，因为它每天都会制造出大量的黄金。Yeah, a big quantity. It would produce something like a hundred and seventy pounds of gold every day. What one hundred and seventy pounds? Pounds is a a measure of weight, so it's about、uh, maybe about two two pounds one kilo. So about eighty-five kilos of gold every day. This produced gold is weighed at one hundred and seventy pounds, which is about one hundred and seventy-five pounds of gold. And not only did it produce gold every day. But we also know from the Vedas that what, wherever in the world the jewel was worshipped, there will be no there will be no famine. And wherever the jewel was kept and it was worshipped properly. Then there would be nothing inauspicious could happen. 而且无论呢，这颗宝石在哪里被妥善的保保管，那里便没有不吉利的事物。There would be no, there would be no epidemics, no diseases or epidemics like what we have now. 呃，没有瘟疫，没有疾病，就没有就像我们现在的这样的疫情。So Lord Krishna wants to teach everyone that the best, whatever is the best, it should be offered to the king or to the ruler of the country. Krishna 希望教导世人要把最好的东西献给一国之君。So King Ugrasena was the ruler, and he was the head of many different other kingdoms. 而乌格森的王呢，是许许多多王朝的，嗯，众王朝之主。He was like the emperor, and he was also the grandfather of Krishna. 呃，乌格森的王就好像是皇帝的位置，而且他还是 Krishna 的外祖父。So Krishna asked Satrajit, he, he asked him if he could give the Shyamantaka jewel to King Ugrasena. Krishna 便要求 Satchit， 嗯，把 Shamatanka 宝石呢献给，献给他。Krishna told him, whatever is the best things in the world, they should be given to the king. Krishna 告诉他呢，世界上最好的事物呢，都应该上交给一国之君。But this such because Satchit had been worshiping the demigods. He become very materially attached. But because Satchit 王崇拜半神的缘故，他已经变得非常的在物质上有严重的依附之心。So instead of doing what Krishna said, he thought better to just worship the jewel and get the gold every day. 嗯，所以他不但没有接纳 Krishna 的请求。而且呢，还每天为了得到大量黄金，崇拜这颗宝石。Yeah, when when materialistic people can get a lot of gold, then they they don't they don't have an interest in Krishna consciousness. 
当物质主义者对于黄金甚感兴趣的时候，他们对 Krishna 之觉也就索然寡味了。So this pastime which we're hearing now about the Shamantaka jewel, this is to teach us that material, to get a lot of money is not good for our Krishna consciousness. And sometimes, to go to show special favor to people, Krishna will take away all their wealth. And when, and when one loses all his wealth, then it's easy for him to surrender to Krishna and become a nice devotee. But the Satrajit, he didn't want to follow Krishna's order. He didn't want to give the jewel. So after this, the Satrajit had a younger brother, and the younger brother wanted to show off the opulence of their family. So he got the jewel and he put it on his neck and he went on his horse and he went riding into the forest to make a show of his opulence. So the, his brother, Satraj's brother, his name was Prasena. And he was in the forest, he was riding around on his horse, but while he was in the forest, he got attacked by a lion, and the lion attacked him and killed him. It killed him and killed his horse also, and it took away the jewel which he was wearing. So there was a, in that area, in the forest, there was a guerrilla king named Jambavan, and he got news what had happened. And so Jambavan, he went to that place and he found that lion in the cave, and he killed the lion and took away the jewel. Yeah, Jambavan was a very powerful, very strong person, and he could kill the lion with his bare hands. So Jambalban actually had been a great devotee since the time of Lord Ramachandra. Yeah, he had come, he was one of the friends of Hanuman and the, one of the bears who came to help. The, with Lord Rama to defeat Ravan and conquer the kingdom of Lanka. So, 
when he saw the jewel, he, he, Jambavan, he wasn't very much worried about the jewel. It did, it, just some jewel did not mean much to him. He just gave it to his young son to play with, like a toy. But in the city, when Satrajit's younger brother did not come back from the forest with the jewel, then Satrajit was very upset. He didn't know that his brother had been killed by a lion and the lion had been killed by Jampavan. And he thought Krishna must have wanted the jewel. So Krishna must have done something. Maybe Krishna took the jewel away from Prasena and killed Prasena by force to get the jewel. Because Krishna had asked Satrajit to give the jewel, but Satrajit didn't give it. So when the jewel went missing, he, he didn't know. He thought Krishna must have taken it. And so it, be, in the, it became a rumor and Satrajit was telling everybody in Dwarka like this, that Krishna killed my brother, he, had, he wanted the jewel, he must have killed my brother and taken the jewel. So it was not true. Krishna had not killed Prasina. He hadn't taken the jewel. But this rumor went everywhere. So Krishna did not like that they were saying these bad things, untrue things about him. So he decided he would go to the forest and find the jewel. So he took some of the important people of Dwarka with him and he went to look for this brother of Satrajit. And then they found his dead body. They found his dead body and they could see that he'd been killed by a lion. Then Krishna looked more and then he found the lion which had been killed by Jambavan. And that lion was killed just simply by the bare hands of Jambavan, without any weapon. Then Krishna found that there was this big tunnel in the forest and that tunnel was taking was to go into the there was a path into <coughs> excuse me there was a big path which a tunnel which would lead to the home of Jambavan so Krishna knew that people who were with him, the people from Dwarka, they would be afraid to go into the tunnel. So Krishna told them 
to wait outside for him and he went into the tunnel alone. So when Krishna got through the tunnel, then he saw, he found there was a son, the son of Jambavan was playing with the Shaimantaka Joe, just like it was a toy. So Krishna came and stood in front of the child and he wants to take the jewel from the child. But there was a nurse who was taking care of the little boy. And when she saw Krishna standing there, then she became afraid. And she want, didn't know what he wanted, and so she cried out in afraid and fear. She cried out, she screamed. So Jambavan, he's a big monkey, a big gorilla, and he heard the nurse cry, and he appeared there. He was very angry. Now, Jambavan is actually a devotee. He's a good devotee. He fought for Lord Rama, so he's, he's a good devotee. But because he was angry, he could not recognize Lord Krishna. Jambavan is he thought it must be some ordinary person, some intruder who's come into his kingdom, into his own place through the tunnel. Because, because Jambavan had been so angry. He couldn't recognize Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, we see Krishna telling Arjuna that he should get free from anger and lust and greed. We cannot come to the spiritual platform until we get free of these things. So Jambavan could not recognize Lord Krishna and he challenged Krishna to a fight. And so the two of them began to fight, just like they were vultures, just like they were these big birds, vultures, they fight with each other. Yeah, when there's a dead body, then these jackals, they'll come and they'll fight with each other to get the, to eat the dead body. So Krishna and Jambavan began to fight and first of all they used, they fought with weapons and when the weapons were all broken then they fought with stones. And when the stones were all finished, then they began to fight with big trees. And then they fought hand to hand. 
and they were hit they were hitting each other with their fists. And their each of their blows when they used their fists, their blows were like striking of thunderbolts. Mm -hmm. Both of them, both Jambavan and Krishna were thinking they're going to win, going to be the victor. But they kept fighting and the fight went on for 28 days. And they fought in the daytime, they fought at night, they didn't stop. They just kept fighting for 28 days and nights continually. Jambavan was the strongest person of that time. But when he was fighting with Krishna, he found gradually that all of his different limbs became slackened and his strength practically was all gone. Krishna was punching him, so he was feeling very tired, he was sweating all over his body. So Jambavan was astonished, he thought, who is this person who is fighting so, so hard with me? Usually Jambavan was, he was aware, he's thinking he's the strongest person. He didn't think there was anybody who could equal him. But when he started to feel tired after Krishna hitting him, then he could understand that this Krishna must be the Supreme Lord. So this is very important and very significant for devotees. In the beginning, Jambavan could not understand Krishna because he was so attached. He was very attached to his son and he was attached to that jewel. He didn't want to give it to Krishna. And when Krishna had come there, he had become angry, thinking Krishna had come to take away the jewel. So even though somebody maybe have a very strong body, it doesn't help you to understand Krishna. So Krishna wants to, Krishna wanted to have a fight with this devotee. Krishna was enjoying the fight. Krishna likes all the all these different sports and he enjoys these different activities with his devotees. Oh, he's just, he, he enjoys being just like a human being. Human beings do these things, so Krishna also likes to do them. Sometimes he likes to fight to show his strength. 
And when he wants to fight, he will pick one of his devotees who can give him a good fight. So Krishna enjoyed this fight with Jambavan. Mm, Jambavan's a devotee, but he didn't know that he was fighting Krishna. He didn't understand that actually he was giving service to Krishna. By, giving, by using his strength and fighting Krishna, he was doing service for Krishna. But when Krishna was pleased by the fighting, then Jambavan understood that this opponent must be the Supreme Lord. So Krishna can only be understood by service. So Krishna is sometimes satisfied by when the devotee fights, just like Jambavan fought him, he was able to satisfy Krishna. So then Jambavan said to Krishna, he said, oh, now I understand who you are. You are the Supreme Lord, Lord Vishnu. You are the source of all strength and wealth and beauty and fame and wisdom and renunciation. These are the six opulences of Bhagavan. So what Jambavan is saying, this is also said in the Vedanta Sutra. Oh yeah, in the Vedanta Sutra it says the Supreme Lord is the source of everything. And Jambavan understood that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord, Vishnu. So Jambavan says to Krishna, you are the creator of the creators of the universal affairs. This is a very, very important instruction for ordinary people. Because ordinary people will always be amazed when they see the activities of somebody with a very special, very brilliant brain. Just like ordinary men, they, they're very impressed when they see the inventions of a great scientist. But Jambavan says that a scientist may be a creator of many wonderful things, but Krishna is the creator of the scientist. He is the creator of not only one scientist, but many, many millions of scientists all over the universe. And not only is Krishna the creator 
of the creators, but he is also the creator of the material elements. Krishna not only is the creator of the elements, but he is also the creator of the material elements. Yeah, the, these so-called scientists, they need the material elements to, to manipulate things, to create anything. And this is all provided by Krishna. So the, the scientists, they use the physical elements and they use the laws of nature to do their different Inventions. But all these elements and the different laws, they're all the creations of Krishna. This is actually scientific understanding. So people who are not very intelligent, they, they do not try to understand who created the brain of the scientist. They're satisfied just to see the creation or inventions of a scientist. So Jambavan is continuing offering prayers to Krishna. He says to Krishna, the time factor is also your representative. Jambavan and it's a time factor which combines all the physical elements. And Jambavan says to Krishna, you are the supreme time factor. And Due to this time factor, all of the creation takes place and is maintained and ultimately annihilated. And then beyond the physical elements and the time factor, the persons who manipulate Beyond the physical elements and the time factor, there are the persons who manipulate the, in the ingredients and advantages of creation. And these people are all parts and parcels of you. So the living entity, he's not, a crea he's not independent in his work of creation. He depends on the creation of the initial creation done by Krishna. So if we study everything carefully, we can see Krishna as the supreme controller of everything. So Jambavan says to Krishna, I can understand you are the same supreme personality of Godhead. And Jambavan said, I worship the Supreme Lord as Lord Ramachandra. And Lord Ramachandra wanted to build a bridge over the ocean. 
And Jambavan said, I saw how the ocean became agitated simply by the glance of Lord Ramachandra. When he glanced over it, the whole ocean became agitated. And when the Lord glanced over it, then all the living entities in the ocean, all the big creatures like the whales and the alligators and the timingala fish, they all became d disturbed. This timingala fish can swallow a whale with one gulp. So the ocean was forced to make way to allow Lord Ramachandra to cross to the island of Lanka. And Lord Ramachandra constructed a bridge over the ocean. And it's known to everyone. Lord Ramachandra did this. But after the construction of the bridge, then a, the fire was set all over the kingdom of Ravan. So during the fight with Ravan, all the different limbs of the body, of his body, was cut by the ar arrows. And this Ravana had ten heads, and his heads fell off on, onto the ground. So Jambavan said, now I understand, you are none other than my Lord Ramachandra. Nobody else has such strength. No one else could defeat me the way you did. So we'll stop there. Today, we'll ask, is there any questions? Shai has a question. Um, can you hear me, Guru Maharaj? Yes, can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we, because when I choose the Thai translate, uh, your voice so low, Guru Maharaj. No, I can hear okay. you. Can you hear me okay? Okay, okay. okay. I, I, I hear you now. Um... My question is, um, I heard from Bajavasi about um, Radharani scare Nor Narasimhadev and he said about who is need to serve Radha, Radharani should not puja Narasimhadev. Um, can you explain about this topic, Guru Maharaj? What is this? I don't say that again. Radharani Narasimhadev, what? Um, okay. I heard from Rajavasi in Vindavan. He said about um, Radharani Sakir Najimadev. Radharani he, what? Uh, afraid. Afraid of Nashengadev? Yes. And and he said he told more about who is need to serve um Radharani. Should not put on Najimadev. So I don't understand about this, Guru Maharaj. I never had anything about this before. Oh, Be because I I know about 
Krishna is the same Narasimha Dev, then why I don't know he said about Radharani scared about Narasimha Dev. Who said? Mm, a brother was seen in Vindavan, Guru Maharaj. Who's Bhagavati? A brother was seen in Guru Maharaj. Brajavati. Brajavasi. Oh, Brajbasi. Uh, ah, Brajbasi. Yes. Mm. Yes. They mm -hmm. said Radharani is afraid of Nishingadev? Yes. I don't know. I never heard. I never heard before, but then that's why I am uh, wondering. Uh, it's okay, Guru Maharaj. Okay. 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 Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Rajendra Prabhu has a question. Rajendra Prabhu. Sorry, again. Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, what about this uh, Guru Mani? Yes. What about this uh, Zamba One? He is a public person. 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 He is a so how can we recognize the Lord if the Lord stand in front of us? In, in what, which vision can we recognize the Lord? in front of us. Well, Jambavan recognized the Lord by his service. When Krishna was pleased by his service, his service was fighting with Krishna. So when we please Krishna by service, we can recognize him. Krishna is only known by devotional service. Hmm. So we have to serve Krishna nicely. We have to serve one one way we can serve him is by chanting his holy name, by chanting his glories. We offer our prayers to him. We serve his lotus feet. We say Hanuman. Hanuman is also the servant of Lord Ramachandra. All those monkeys like Jambavan and Hanuman, they were all servants of Lord Ramachandra. Of course, the, it was an unusual service, but Jambavan, he was able to satisfy Lord Krishna by fighting. And now he, he's, we just heard he offered nice prayers to the Lord. And he's going to give his daughter also to the Lord. So, the daughter of Jambavan is called Jambavati, and she became one of Krishna's wives. Jambavan's 
So Krishna can only be known by devotional service, no other way. The jnanis, they have to try, take birth many, many, many times to get knowledge, to just to surrender to Krishna. But the devotees know him simply through loving service. It was also mentioned that you may have a strong body, it doesn't mean you'll be able to understand Krishna any better. Just because your body is very strong, that's not the qualification. There has to be the mood you want to give service to Krishna. So Jambavan, you know, he must have had really a strong mood to give service. He could fight with Krishna for 28 days without stopping. That's incredible. They say this tunnel, they say this tunnel to Jambavan's kingdom is, to, is there. They have it in Gujarat, in India, they have that place. And the people go and visit there. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, here's a question from Vedavati. Uh, Vedavati. Hare Krishna. My question is that uh, Hare Krishna uh, Guru Dev, how can we properly introduce the Krishna uh, in yoga studio? Well, usually we will introduce Krishna by giving book to someone, let people give up, give a book out to the people, let them take the book and read it, and find out if they are interested when they read the book. Other people, they may get interested, they may like to hear the chanting of the Maha Mantra. So sometimes, you know, when you're doing yoga exercises, you play the music, the yoga music, the chanting of Hare Krishna. And in this way, people gradually get some taste for hearing the holy name. Yes. So that's well then we also sometimes give prasada, people doing yoga, you can encourage them that you know yoga food is very good. Teach them how to do yoga eat yoga food, what is yoga cooking? Cooking yoga food, nice vegetarian foodstuffs offered to Krishna. 
get them to buy the get them to buy the biscuits which the devotees make. Uh, tell them that this is uh, offered to Krishna. Well, you don't have to tell them that. Uh, okay. But you can tell them this is yoga food. Recommended for yoga. Tell them that there's no karma. So it's very good for health. Okay. Now there's another question by Yuvati Sachi. Yuvati Sachi? Yes, I had a Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all Guru Shishila Prabhupada. If Yadavas knew that Krishna, the Supreme Lord, how can they thought that he stole the Shyamantaka and killed Prasena? Well, not everyone in Dwarka would be the Yadu dynasty. There would be other people. But there's a, there's also the potency, the Lila Shakti, Maya potency that sometimes it covers Krishna, just like Arjuna was bewildered on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So, for the purpose of the pastime, it happens sometimes like this, that the devotees, like the Yadu dynasty, that they may become a little covered and they're subject to the rumor. People, you know, the Satrajas going around telling everybody, you see, my brother's gone and they took the jewel, he hasn't come back. And Krishna wanted it, he asked me, he wanted me to give it to him. And now my brother's gone and the jewel's also missing. So I think Krishna's responsible. 那么压度族人虽然他们是奉献者但是他们也被这个流言蜚语所蒙蔽了而且下车去的呢就到处到处散布说我的弟弟呢他带着这个宝石他走了然后呢以前呢奎神呢曾经管我要这个宝石但是现
通过战斗，张曼曼呢就取悦了主 k r i s h n 呃，我的问题是，嗯、呃，比如像烹饪、学习，为了传播学习一门新语言，读《薄伽梵歌》、念诵，嗯，这些是不是？能够像以同样的方式能够取悦主 Krishna 呢？我明白念诵十六圈是最重要的服务。那么聆听和唱诵是不是比其他的服务更能呃对我们产生净化效应呢 ？Oh, definitely, hearing and chanting are more more powerful. Than other types of service, just like you mentioned things like <laughs> learning a language. <laughs> 嗯，肯定的，像聆听，嗯，唱诵是更有力量的服务，就比嗯，比起你说的，就学习一门新语言是更有力量的服务。Sometimes, of course, your your motive is to serve Krishna. But still,、uh, what is really important is our hearing and our chanting. Your motive, 当然是为了您是为了服务 Krishna 去学这个语言，但是更重要的是聆听和念诵。These other services, you have to see if you can use them to set to please Krishna. 其他的服务，您必须衡量斟酌，是不是能用来服务 Krishna， 取悦 Krishna。Just like learning a language, it can take a long time to learn a language before you can actually use it in Krishna's service. 比如说，像学习一门新语言，它需要很长的时间，就是在你能够真正把它利用起来做服务之前呢，你需要花费很长的时间。But some devotees, some devotees, like they distribute books, they learn a few lines, they learn some words, and they're able to use these few words in foreign languages to distribute books. Well, there's one man, one devotee here from Ukraine, and he used to distribute books in Taiwan, so he can speak a little bit Chinese. 有一位乌克兰的奉献者，他以前在台湾派书的时候呢，他就会说几句简单的中文。So, I mean, it's not really, uh, it's not. Actually, devotional service, but distributing the book is devotional service. So, learning a language is not the real devotional service, but distributing the book is devotional service. Krishna is pleased. You are giving the books. People are learning about Krishna. They are getting knowledge. So that is good. That is pleasing to Krishna. Krishna 也会感到满意的，因为您在派书，派发 Krishna 的知识，所以也是好的。Just to learn language, that's not very important. 呃，掌握一门语言并不十分重要。But sometimes it helps to distribute the book. 呃，有的时候在派派书的时候呢，嗯，它是有用的。Does Rajendra have another question, or was that the hand raised from before? I will ask Krishna Maharaj one more question. Uh, Kunti Devi, Shang Krishna, Chidao, Shuo, Dang Feng Xian Zhe, Zhong Cheng Feng Xian Zhe, Yu Dao Wei Xian Zhe, Shuo, Ta Shang Krishna, Hu Jiu, Pao Pa Shuo, Xia Mian Shuo, Zhong Cheng Feng Xian Zhe, Hai Bu Shang Krishna, Qi Qiu Bang. 是当奉献者遇到危险的时候，是向会上求救好呢，还是不向会上求救好？这是第一个问题。第二个问题，如果求救的话，这个表现方式是什么？只是在那喊救命啊，救命啊，还是献祷文，还是只唱哈利会上妈门陀 ？Thank you， 妈门。
Did you, uh, did so, you get it all? Said? Yeah, yes, oh, yes. So, uh, my questions, uh, uh, Raphim Purple's questions that in the uh, uh, Quinti's prayer, uh, it is said that the, a faithful devotee uh, in a uh, dangerous situation will call help to Krishna. But in the purport, Srila Prabhupada said that um, a faithful devotee will, will not even ask help from Krishna. So my question is that whether or not we should ask help for Krishna uh, and in which way should we ask help? Should we simply chant Hare Krishna or ask uh, or offering prayers or simply uh, ask, uh, say that, help me, save me? <laughs> well, uh, what we have to consider what is actually pure devotional service. So Achari, the Acharyas tell us that if you are in a very life-threatening situation and you call out to Krishna for help, it's not against pure devotional service. But if every day or all the time regularly we're calling out to Krishna, help me, save me, then that's not pure devotional service. We have to consider the situation. Is it really life threatening? Is it very, uh, are we very close to death, very dangerous? Or is it, was it just something, oh, we just need help, we need Krishna's help, we want Krishna's help? We see Prahlad Maharaj was in a lot of danger from his father. He never called out to Krishna, but he was always remembering Krishna. And because he was always remembering Krishna, no harm could come to him. Now, Draupadi called out to Krishna to save her, and she's glorified for that. Of course, it was a very unique situation. It, was, it wasn't something which happened every day. So we can call out to Krishna if we're really in a, a very unusual situation, then it's all right. It's, pure, it's still in, in the realm of pure devotional service. So if we're really in a very unusual situation, but don't use Krishna for our own sense gratification. We want to serve Krishna. We don't want to always be taking service from Krishna. We want to serve Krishna, 
得到福。Okay, so we will st stop here tonight. Any other questions, Archana, or is it Kanupriya? No questions. Okay. No more questions. You have any more, Guru Mani? Yeah. I have a small question about association. Uh -huh. For example, if we regularly uh, have association, for example, on a certain day of the week, but when there is a festival, should we have, um, uh, sh should we continue to associate the, our in a regular way or to change it to the day when the festival is held. I问一个小问题，就是比，我关于联谊，呃，就是比如说我们定期联谊，但如果遇到节日的时候呢，那我们是就是该联谊联谊，再增加一个节日呢，还是说把这个联谊的日期就取消，然后换到一个节日的那天